Now let's go ahead and demonstrate what we have learned by actually executing some commands. What you see on the screen is the Linux command line. That's where I will do all of the demonstrations. I have Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL, installed on my Windows 10. Quite handy. Let's start with the base64 encoding by using the command base64. Let's see how. So the first thing I will see is base64, if I need any help, is just simply base64 dash dash help. You know, so this gives me all of the options. So let's assume that you have a line. Now this is a line and I want to actually base64 encode. Let's see what I do. And pipe it to base64. That's it. I got a base64 output. Now I use the dash n option so that the end of line is not used for base64 encoding. Otherwise, the end of line will also be taken into consideration. Now, if I want to do base64 decoding, I do the exact reverse with the option of dash d. And then again, pipe it to base64 with a dash d option. There you go, I got the line back. So I've been able to do base64 encoding as well as decoding. Let's see what the files are there in my current directory. Let me go into directory crypt play. Let me see what the files are. So I have a data image.png. Now that's not text data. So let me go ahead and do base64 on the text data. If I do base64 on a image, it should show me a readable file. This should show me a readable bunch of characters. So that's what base64 is supposed to do. And you can send this thing over the wire as text. But I also want this base64 encoded characters in a file. So let me go ahead and redirect the standard output to a file. I'm redirecting it to a file. So that's really base64. Now I can do the same thing to decode it with the dash D option and redirect it to a file called data image dash decoded.png. So I got the original file back. Let's see if both of them have the same number of characters. Yeah, data image.png and data image.decoded.png have the same number of characters. So I was able to base64 encode and decode the file. Now let's look at URL encoding and decoding. Now in Linux, you have to install the package called grid sites clients. Now this makes it more convenient. You can just use the apt install. Let me go ahead and clear it. You can say sudo apt. So that's the command. So in this case, I have already installed it, so it doesn't do anything, but you will go ahead and install it in this fashion. So once you have done with this, you're gonna use the command called URL encode. Let's take a look. If you need any help, and it'll give you whatever help you require. Let's say I wanna send a URL as part of a field in another URL. So I want to URL encode this particular URL. Let's do this. So I have some special characters, space, you know, all these things should be URL encoded. So let's see what happens. So there you go. You will see that some of the characters like colon, question mark, space have been correctly URL encoded. Now, if I do the reverse, that is with an option of dash D, let's see what happens. You got the unencoded string back right so if you want to send you first you do a url encoding and send it across using http and then on the other side just decode it now let's move on to some really interesting stuff hashing for much of the rest of the section we will use a command line utility called OpenSSL, which supports hashing and various forms of encryption decryption and signatures 
The name of the command is OpenSSL, but it has various options. For creating a hash, the command starts with OpenSSL DGST, which stands for digest. Let's go ahead, clear the screen. So if I need any help, I'll just simply say dash help. Now dash help is standard in OpenSSL commands. Anytime you don't know what it is, just use dash help. The easy thing over here is just give a file name and it'll create a digest for you. Let's see. This should give a digest or hash, basically it's the same thing, for dataimage.png. So here's a binary file, dataimage.png, it's gonna create a digest. But what algorithm it's gonna use? By default, it's gonna use SHA-256. So here's the SHA-256 digest for dataimage.png. These characters are actually not part of the digest, only these are. If I want to use a different algorithm, like SHA-512, and then I simply mention that in the command line. So you, now you can see that the SHA-512 has given you a larger output because SHA-512 is gonna create 512 bits of the output, whereas SHA-256 will give you 256 bits of output. But in reality, this is base64 encoded, but I actually want to see the binary. So if I want to just see the binary, I use the binary option, and you will see a binary option. There's strange characters out there. That's basically binary. If I want to output the digest to a different file, I'm outputting it to a file called dataimage-dgst. So that's the file right there. Why is the file 64 characters? It's 64 characters, that is multiplied by eight. It'll be 512. And that's what SHA-512, you asked for SHA-512. If you have like a simple text, there's an easier way to do the digest. And that's just simply use the echo command like we used for other commands before. So let's do this. I'm just simply gonna pipe it to the digest command. Right, so you got this. Now let me do it again and see what happens. You see that you get the exact same output. This is a danger in some cases because this is open to dictionary attacks. Think about where we use hashing. One of the places where we use hashing is passwords. Now if we had stored the hash of the password in our database, somebody could just look at the hash and say, if the hash is this particular thing, the password must be XXX. Most of the time, the passwords that people use are welcome or password123, some really easy thing to remember. Such common passwords are prone to what they call dictionary attacks or rainbow attacks. In this, a large database of well-known passwords are mapped to their hashes for common hashing algorithms like SHA-256 or SHA-512. The hacker then has to just compare the stolen hash with the stored hash in this database to find the original password. This is the reason why sorting is so important when hashes are created as passwords. A sort basically adds random data to the password before the hash is created, and that makes the job of the hacker very difficult. The digest command by itself does not provide us a way to provide a sort. OpenSSL has another command called password, which creates a sorted hash and which is a lot more secure. Let's see how that works. If I need help, I'm going to see dash six, which is SHA-512 based password algorithm. I'll choose any password. So there you go. So I chose a password and OpenSSL password gave me a hashed password, but with a salt. If I do it again for the same password, 
I will get a completely different output because the salt, this particular thing is the salt out here. The salt is different and it had used its own salt because you did not specify what salt to use. Now you can use your own salt out here and you can mention and say salt password and there you go. That's my own salt. This is my own salt one. So outputs are different. So salt helps in keeping your password hash secure. 